Next week's commander, supreme commander, in fact, the man with absolute authority over the combined forces of many nations, Dwight D. Eisenhower, who had to take the crucial decision to launch the invasion of Europe. That's again at 7.15 next Sunday evening. And tomorrow night, General Sir John Hackett continues his series for Valour at 5 to 8. On BBC Two tomorrow, Inside Story. To combat the unacceptably high mortality rate among divers on the North Sea oil rigs, government-sponsored training schools were set up. This programme follows the fortune of one such course at Fort Bobby Sand in Plymouth. The young men apply to come here in three ways. They can be sponsored by their company, they can be sponsored by the government, or they can pay for it themselves. Not many do. It costs £3,000. There are 16 candidates and the course will last for three months. By the time it finishes, very few of these young men will end up with certificates. For learning to be an underwater worker is cold, dark, dirty, difficult and dangerous. All right, get that fingers over the top of that mask. Over the top. That's the way now. Look up. Come on, looking up. Hand over that jacket. You ready? One, two, three. This is the road to inner self-discipline that a diver must develop. It's no good pressing a panic button if your head gets wet. Diver, the inside story tomorrow at 9.25. Tonight's turning your tale in five minutes is May Blossoms. Now at almost seven minutes past eight, the news on two with Christopher Morris. At least five people died and over a hundred have been injured by bombs in Madrid. In a new wave of violence, Basque terrorists exploded three bombs at lunchtime in the Spanish capital. There was a warning less than an hour before. The bombs exploded at the Baracas airport, at Chamartin station, and at the central Atocha station. The second bomb was at the airport, Madrid's domestic terminal. Here, two died and a score were injured. The explosion was as at the stations in the left luggage area. The bomb shattered glass, blew out parts of ceiling and walls of the baggage rooms, scattering passengers' luggage everywhere. Our correspondent says the bombs were an obvious follow-up to ETA's call to continue its armed campaign in protest at a recent government agreement on home rule for the Basques, which the terrorists say does not go far enough. The third bomb exploded at Chamartin station. Here, two more died and more than 50 were injured. The station was full of tourists and the terminals were closed and evacuated. Again, the damage was extensive and the authorities, fearing more bombs had been planted, worked with bomb squad officers to search the remaining luggage lockers. Today's explosions mean that 97 people have now died this year in Spain as a direct result of political violence. Iraq's ruling Revolutionary Command Council has said that five senior officials have been arrested in connection with a treacherous crime of conspiracy against the state. One report from Lebanon says that they've already been executed and that at least another 250 people have been arrested. Meanwhile, the Iraqi news agency has said that Mr. John Smith, the British businessman arrested in Baghdad two weeks ago, has been accused of trying to bribe an Iraqi official to procure a business deal. Mr. Smith, who's now been seen by a British consular official, is said to be in good health. Mr. Frank Alorn, the Labour Party chairman, has repeated demands by the party executive that the leader should be elected by the whole party, not just the MPs. Mr. Alorn, speaking to young socialists in Gloucestershire, said there'd been a misunderstanding between the executive and the unions about an overall party review. There is no split between the unions and the constituency Labour parties. That is the last thing the membership and the NEC want. Our strength as a movement depends on both wings and anyone trying to stir up hostility between the two is no friend of the Labour Party. In Lincolnshire, a six-year-old girl has been killed by lightning on a beach at Skegness. The lightning also injured a group of holidaymakers, including another child whose condition is said to be very serious. And at Blackpool, two teenagers, a boy from Liverpool and a girl from Leeds, have drowned in rough seas. The deaths came as bad weather brought a sudden end to the heat wave and caused flooding in some areas of southern England. Motor racing and the German Grand Prix at Hockenheim was won by the Australian Alan Jones driving a Williams. 
Jones led from start to finish, but he was closely pursued in the later stages by his teammate Clay Ricardsoni of Switzerland, who finished a close second. Third was Jack Lafitte of France. England's cricket team for the second test against India is virtually unchanged. Brearley captain, Boycott, Gooch, Gower, Randall, Botham, Miller, Edmonds, Taylor, Hendrick, Lever, in place of Bob Willis, who's injured, and Old. The Queen has flown to a game park in eastern Zambia to relax before the Commonwealth Conference opens in Lusaka on Wednesday. At a state banquet last night, the Queen referred to the problems expected to arise at the conference, especially over Rhodesia. For example, it is a sign of maturity and good faith that despite the strains and stresses which have inevitably arisen as a result of the problems of Southern Africa and their impact on Zambia, the underlying goodwill and understanding between our two peoples has endured and will, I hope, grow and flourish in what we all sincerely pray will be more peaceful years ahead. And that's the News on Two from me. Good evening. Well, here's the weather. Central and eastern parts of Britain will start bright and apart from the odd shower, dry. Cloud will, however, increase during the morning and rain will spread from the west to most places later. Western parts will have rain during the morning. It's giving way to brighter weather with showers later in all but the northwest of Scotland. Temperatures will be a shade lower than today's and close to the late July normal everywhere. Time now for another turning year tale on BBC Two. Tonight, Jean Haywood in May Blossoms by Tom Hadaway. <laughs> 